coming back to Mosfer spectroscopy. Now we said that over here that this source and sample, although they have the similar transition happening three by two to half or vice versa, that energy is not actually matching. And the loose explanation I was giving that because of the electronic environment that is different. Now the question is why the electronic environment is affecting the nuclear state. So that is we are going to cover in the final section of today's class. So electron nucleus interaction. So generally when you look into a nuclei, so say this is the nucleus. It is actually covered by an electronic cloud. Right. And this electronic cloud, it is nothing but we can say it is going to create an electrical field. So you can imagine there is a positively charged system that is nucleus is sitting inside an electric field. So that is why there is going to have some electron nucleus interaction, which we can define as a monopole. What do I mean by monopole? With respect to the nucleus, if I see in the perspective of the nucleus, the nucleus is sitting as a positively charged and it, we have put it in an electrical field. So there is no other pole over there. So it is actually taken as a monopole. And this monopole, is actually situated inside a electrical field and that I can measure the Coulombic force, the Coulombic force that monopole is facing. Now, before I go there, there are certain things I need to understand. First thing we need to understand that this interaction will happen once the electron and the nucleus share a common place. That means they have to situate it at the same place. Now, what do I know? That electron cloud is surrounding the nucleus, but the electron cannot generally go inside the nucleus. But unless the electron goes inside the nucleus, there shouldn't be any common space where they are actually sharing the space. Otherwise, there will be like a totally different field there will be interface between them. but what I want to understand if they can share a common space so for that I have to understand is there even a finite possibility that electron can penetrate the nucleus is it possible for the electron to go inside the nucleus. So any suggestion on that? Is it even possible? Or what do you think? Is it possible the electron can penetrate the nucleus? Yes, sir, for the radioactive nuclei, it happens sometimes because electron capture is uh, taken place from the K cell. So I think that is possible. So yes, yeah, so that is true. Yes, anyone else want to add anything? Because if not, so what we are talking about is a little bit different. When you talk about the electron capture, the electron at the end is actually losing its identity. It is going inside the nucleus and becoming a part of the nucleus. But what I am trying to understand, if the electron can still hold its identity, just stay inside the nucleus for a bit and they can, can come out unharmed, if that is possible. And the answer over there is actually yes, it is possible. So now if I look into the different kind of electron and if I define it like what is the different orbitals they stay in, these are the four different orbitals we generally actually exposed to S, P, D, F. And among them, only S orbital can actually go through the nuclear. The rest of them cannot go through. Now the question is how do I know it? So that you know from a particular 
parameter which is known as radial distribution function. I'm quite sure most of you have gone through that in your quantum mechanical class. So what is a radial distribution function or RDL? Now when we have an electron, we define the electron in quantum mechanics as a wave function, as a wave form, psi. And then if I take the square of that psi square, that actually defines the probability of finding that electron in that particular orbital and which is not says over a particular space. Now how if I can draw that in a graph, we can draw the orbitals fine, but if I want to draw that with respect to a graph, over there I am drawing chi square, that means what is the probability of finding the electron. And in this x axis I am drawing r, r is nothing but distance from the nuclear. Or nucleus. Now, when you look into what you found for one s orbital, I am going to draw that for each and one orbital. For one s orbital, it looks like this. What does it mean? That over there I have the maxima. After a while, it is almost non-zero existence. So there's everything fine. But one important thing we found over there. Here we found at r equal to zero chi square value is actually not equal to zero. Why? I'm not going into the details. It depends on how I define the chi function. Look into the chi function of 1s orbital. And over there, if you put r equal to zero, we'll find your chi square value is not going to be zero. It is a non-zero value. What that means? That means there is a finite possibility just for even for some time that electron can stay inside the nucleus. R equal to zero means you are inside the nucleus. That is what is actually happening. Now, if I draw the 2s orbital, I am drawing the radial distribution function for the 2s and the 2p set of orbitals. Again, I am drawing the chi square and radial and the internuclear distance from the, uh, sorry, the, inter the electron distance from the nucleus. And if I draw the 2s orbital, the 2s orbital looks like this. So over there, there is a particular point where chi square becomes zero at a finite r value. This is something known as a radial node. So in 1s orbital, you don't see such kind of r equal to uh, chi square equal to zero value over here, but over here you see that. That is called node. And how the radial node looks like? So if I want to draw 1s orbital, it looks like a sphere. And if you cut down the sphere in half, you'll find it is still a total sphere. But if you look into the 2s orbital from outside, it looks like a sphere. If you cut it half, you'll find this following. That at one particular place, there is zero electron density. And outside that there is one. So there is a hollow region at particular r value, there is no electron density is present. So that is called as a node and a radial node. And this is present in the 2s orbital. Okay. So that is why when you are drawing the RDF, we found this is zero curve. <coughs> what about the 2p orbital? 2p orbital looks like this. So this is 2s, this is 2p. And now over here you can see the 2p value is saying that it has a chi square equal to zero value at r equal to zero because look into the wave function of chi equal to 2p. And then if you look into the wave function of 2s, you find chi square equal to non-zero equal to r equal to zero. Again, look into the wave function of chi equal to 2s and compare that with 2p you'll find that if you put r equal to zero, chi square will not equal to be zero for 2s. Similarly, that means 2s has finite probability to be inside the 
nucleus, but 2p is not. Now, very quickly, I'll go to 3s, 3p, and 3d. So, 3s looks like this. So, now it has two nodes. You probably learned that it equal, uh, earlier that how many nodes you expect. It is n minus l minus 1, n equal to primary coordinate, uh, primary quantum number, a equal to azimuthal quantum number, all those things. So there will be two nodes. So that means if I take a 3s orbital, which looks like a sphere, if I cut it in half, you'll find two regions where there are no electron density present. OK, that is how it is going to look like. Now, if you look into 2p, That is how it's going to look like. So 2p, sorry, 3p is going to have one node. And then you probably can have say 3d. That is how 3d is going to look like. So that is how it's going to look like. And over here, again, you are going to see for 3s, uh, at r equal to 0, it is non-zero. For 3p and 3d value, they are equal to 0. So they cannot be present inside the nuclei, but 3s can. And that is why we suggested that, yes, it is possible to have some electron density present inside the nucleus if you have s orbital, but not p or d or f orbital. Now, with respect to that, we come to this thing that, OK, so we are talking about a nucleus. We have some electron density outside. And we are trying to find out what is the effect of this electron density on the nuclei. And over there, the electron density we are concerned about is only the S electron density. Now, because as we discussed earlier, it is a monopole and we are trying to find what is the effect of this electron field on the nucleus. And if I want to draw the Hamiltonian, because that is how we define the surrounding, how this electrical field is affecting the nuclei, we are going to find an equation. And for before finding the equation, I am taking two assumptions. First assumption is this nucleus is ready. Uh, we are talking about is spherical, and the radius of this nucleus is r. These are the two assumptions I'm taking. I'm taking it as a sphere, not any other particular 3D shape, which is possible. But at this moment, we are taking only spherical. If that is the case, the Hamiltonian will be given by this equation: two by five z is square psi 0 square r square. Now I'll go slowly what each of these terms believe. So over there, this z e square term is actually a mixture of z e, which actually defined what is the nuclear charge. Z is the number of protons present in the system. So it will surely define the monopole energy with respect to what is the nucleus I am talking about. And then the electron you have, the electron charge density that we also have to think about, and that is given as minus E, that is the charge of an electron, into psi zero square. What is psi zero square? Psi zero square is that electron density inside the nucleus. As you just said, so AS electron density possible to spend some time inside the nucleus. How much electron density is present inside the nucleus? That is given by psi zero square. Psi zero is the wave function inside the nucleus. Psi zero square is the probability. And if I multiply that with the minus E sign, that will be the electron charge density. 
and in the hamiltonian previously it should have a negative sign because i'm talking about a positive charge nucleus with an electron so there should be a negative charge in the beginning but that negative sign is cancelled by this electron charge density so that is why it is not there and r is the radius of the system so that is how the equation comes so now i can have an hamiltonian how the system is behaving with some electron density present inside the nucleus now imagine this is not going to be the same for the sample and the solution and that is why this hamiltonian is going to change that means it is very similar to some perturbation and that is going to affect my energy states now how they are going to be happening what will be the parameters we have to look into that we will cover next week on friday so we are going to stop it over here any questions up to this point please go ahead